Question number three, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question. Order. Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll start again. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement in relation to the Reserve Bank that, quote, it's not an option for the bank to raise interest rates, end quote? Uh, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, first of all, uh, as I said at the time, that's a matter for the Governor. Uh, but I do stand by my statement, which simply reflects what just about every market commentator is saying. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Uh, to the Prime Minister, not the market commentator. Order. Why? Just ask the question to the Prime Why? Minister. Why? Why did he put public pressure on the Reserve Bank Governor to use his power to not raise interest rates when the whole point of the Reserve Bank independence is to protect the Governor from partisan interference? Why, right, Honourable Prime well, Minister. Mr Speaker, I didn't put any pressure on the Reserve Bank Governor. As I said, it's a matter for the Governor. But is, but is the Leader of the Opposition telling us, in an environment where inflation is 0.8% and probably going lower, where our base rates are 3.5%, where seven countries in the developed world this year alone have cut interest rates, where three quarters of the world have base Order. rates between 0 and 1%, that he seriously wants the Governor to raise rates, in which case, no wonder he's throwing Order. Willow Order. Jean Prime under the Order. bus because Order. you won't be getting Order. any far raised... Order! Remind the Prime Minister when I rise to my feet, it's important that he then resumes his seat. Supplementary, Supplementary. question, Andrew Little. In light of that answer, if he thinks megaphone diplomacy with the Reserve Bank is OK, why didn't he intervene to exempt first home buyers from the Reserve Bank's LVR restrictions? Mr Speaker, oh, right, Honourable Prime well, actually, I'm glad the member raised that because that was going to be one of my points, but I might as well cut straight to it. Because, Mr Speaker, that's exactly what the Labor Party did when the LVR ratio came out. They ripped straight into it uh, with David Cunliffe and said, oh, by the way, they shouldn't be doing it. And in 2014, Labor, because Mr Parker will know it's his policy, went into the election actually with a variable Kiwi Saver contribution, which would have meant that actually politicians would have had to decide part of what was happening in terms of interest rate setting, not the Governor. Supplementary. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, is he aware that house prices in Auckland went up by almost $90,000 on average last year alone? And isn't that a sign that his half measures on housing affordability are a failure and the only real solution is to get out there and build affordable homes? That's right. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker. Um, it seems pretty well wide of the mark, but I mean, of course, the question uh, you know, the government is building a lot more, insisting on building a lot more homes. I think 84 of the 100 special housing areas that have been consented are actually in Auckland. But, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, what the member, I assume, seems to be saying, if we tie the two together, is Andrew Little is saying that interest rates should rise. That is a remarkable thing to think. If that's your level of economic understanding, I am shocked that you want interest rates to Order. go up. Order. Fair enough. Order. The question. Supplementary question, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What reports has the Prime Minister seen that explicitly question the Reserve Bank Governor's independent judgment in setting monetary policy? Oh, yeah. Right, Honourable uh, Prime Minister. Well, actually, no, he hasn't. And, well, actually, Mr Speaker, I've seen a number of reports regarding monetary policy decisions over the years. They include, quote, unquote, the Reserve Bank Governor is out of order. Oh. <laughs> quote, unquote, we're disappointed by the Reserve Bank's decision to raise the cash rate. OK? And best of all, politicians must stop cynical point scoring in these matters. Those comments were made in a press release by... Andrew Little. <laughs> Point of order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Order. 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 This will be a point of order that will be heard in silence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I seek leave to table a printout from the qv.co.nz website confirming that average Auckland house order. prices rose $90,000 last order. year. Order. As I've well, ruled on many occasions, if it's freely available, members to go and search it on the web themselves, I don't intend to. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. Supplement. Point of order. Point of order. Uh, right I seek Prime leave Minister. to table the press release reserved order. being and, Governor and, out and, of order. And order. I, Andrew, order. 
order. Such press releases are also freely available. Remember, supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. <laughs> widely read, widely read. Just so we are clear, does he dispute the figures from Harcourt CEO Hayden Duncan and from ASB economist Jane Turner showing that current rates of building consents are not high enough to cope with Auckland's population growth? <coughs> well, Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, there has been an explosion of building activity in Auckland and around New Zealand. Well, members might laugh, but actually, it's true. And, and Mr Speaker, well, quite a, quite a few, actually, Mr Speaker, and they will continue to happen. And actually, they'll happen under a national-led government that has allowed special housing areas to take place, which the opposition were opposed to. They'll happen because interest rate settings are affordable for New Zealand, which, by the way, the opposition was opposed to. But if the member really cares about Aucklanders, here's an idea. Join with us and vote with us on the Resource Management Act reforms. Oh, that's right. You won't. Supplementary. Come on. I'm just waiting for assistance. Thank you. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Why not just be straight with the people of Auckland and admit there are more people per house than before, it's projected to get worse in the years to come, and his tinkering will only send house prices higher and higher again and again? Mr. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. I think, actually, if we go back to the supplementary question, I was very, uh, the primary question, I was very straight. As I said, it's a matter for the Governor, but in my opinion, raising interest rates at this time was not the, is not the right thing to do. But, Mr Speaker, when it comes to being straight, here's the answer. Mark Osborne. Because, guess what? Andrew Little doesn't know the answer to the question. Winston Peters or Willow Jean Brown. Order. He doesn't know Order. the answer. Order. Supplementary. Supplementary. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Why don't you table it? Making question time. Too much fun. When is he going to stop doing the Reserve Bank's job, start doing his own job, and realise that under his watch, home ownership has plummeted? Prices have skyrocketed, and for hundreds of thousands of Kiwis, the dream of owning their own home has just now lies in ruins. Mr. Speaker, right, Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister, I am doing my job, uh, and Mr. Speaker, and one of my jobs is leader of the National Party, and as leader of the National Party, I'm voting for Mark Osborne. As leader of the Labor Party, that member doesn't have a clue who to vote for. Interesting. Here's the answer. Willow Jean Prime. She's got Labour on the bottom Order. of their billboards Order. around the electorate. Order. 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 There's a point of order called by Tracy Mark. Uh, just some clarification, Mr Speaker. Previously, the Prime Minister has denied... Order. This is a point of order. And it will be heard so I can hear it in silence. Previously, the Prime Minister has declined to answer questions because they were, he was working in his capacity as the leader of the National Party. We now have the Prime Minister standing and as the leader of the National Party making statements in the House to answers for questions. Can I ask you to clarify that for us, please, when it's suitable and when it is not? Order. 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 It is, it is a very difficult line for me to clarify, but... Uh, on many occasions, when I go back through Hansards, various ministers or prime ministers have declared that they've made statements as a party leader and therefore shouldn't be questioned because that's the basis on which they've made the question. The prime minister on this stage brought in, uh, this particular answer brought in the fact that he was uh, a leader of a political party, which is not out of order. Um, and when I consider the question about why won't you do your job or words to that effect, I gave the Prime Minister a fair amount of latitude in the way he then did answer that question. Question number four, Barbara Stewart. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of